So you're you're currently commander in chief of of MSK. How did that come to be? I know you've been with with that team for a while. And when I think about MSK, it's like there are tons of graffiti crews. There are so many graffiti crews and very few that make an impact, even fewer that remain intact over a span of years. And, you know, MSK did both of those things. They made an impact and they've remained intact over a span of years. And they, from what I see, are just continuously pushing forward, pushing forward. What do you think it is about when it comes to longevity of a crew makes it that when it comes to the worldwide influence of a crew makes it that? Well, I've been in MSK over 30 years. I got in the summer of 92. Um, originally, it was an offshoot of AWR. Um, both both crews started in West LA. Um, Eclipse is, uh, he's the real leader. Um, he's he's the glue. He's, he's the mastermind behind all this stuff. Um, I, I kind of joke because like uh, maybe 13, 14 years ago, Eclipse asked me to take over. And, uh, you know, I'm just happy enough uh, all my friends were like, okay with that. Because um, I'm not, some crews, are, some crews run differently. Like some crews are like, you write their three letters, but you're essentially writing um, the leader's crew. And you're essentially hitting this person up over and over again. This crew's never been like that. This is more of a, a co-op where we all sort of like pitch in. Um, we have at least a dozen guys that could be their own leaders or they, there are leaders in their own right. Some guys are leaders of their own crews. Um, we probably have no less than half a dozen leaders of major crews in our crew. Um, but we, but like I said, we probably have like uh, 10 to 20 different dudes that are leaders themselves. So um, I get the, the credit and respect because I'm the earliest guy who took this this style and sort of set the blueprint. When I started writing MSK, nobody nobody knew about MSK. There was no such thing as MSK, really. It was just a, um, three letters that the two guys wrote prior to me. So I went, um, you know, essentially all city in Los Angeles, and then I expanded the reign from Tijuana to Vancouver, Canada, pretty much before we had uh, nationwide recognition. And it was uh, taking spots that maybe somebody would catch a tag on, maybe an outline, and I was trying to push a little further, do pieces. Um, I was one of the first persons, persons, uh, people to do um, what guys call nowadays walkouts, which are the support beams of bridges. I'd seen people do outlines, tags, maybe a fill-in. I was the first person that I saw uh, to do pieces up there. Um, I did a bunch of freeway signs, which in California we call heavens, um, and really just pushing those boundaries. And, um, you know, I was, a, I took saber painting for the first time in his life, like, uh, like bombing. He had been painting like drainage ditches out, out in a uh, thousand oaks. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's just a lot of first and it's like, uh, I think a lot of the newer guys, you know, guys that are either my age or younger, you know, maybe they were influenced by me and maybe I was their number one early on. So I led them before they were in the crew. So it's just a mutual respect thing. It's like, I'm very honored to be able to say out loud that I, I help lead this crew. Um, I'm not king of the crew by any means. It doesn't work like that. Um, you know, I can't tell anybody what to do. I, there's a lot of hard heads. There's a lot of strong opinions, and that's great. You know, it's like some, I can make uh, suggestions. I have ideas. Um, I called the last two meetings to get the guys together, and um, I get to speak and I give little speeches in front of the guys. Yeah. So, in terms of putting new people down and you know the future of the crew, where do you see that? Well, we had a a really big meeting uh, maybe six months ago in L.A. in South Central. Um, you know, we, maybe we had a little bit of a slow, uh, little lull in activity for a while there. Um, and we put, uh, about a dozen people in at one time. We've never done that before. Not even close. And, um, 
you know, all these people, some knew other people in MSK better than others, but essentially they all had some sort of connection. Um, some of the guys should have gone in like 20 years ago, like Dax and Beggar, but um, for whatever reason they didn't. Um, but we also needed some new blood, you know, like I'm, I'm old ish. Uh, some of the guys are old ish, you know, we're, um, the demographic graffiti has changed over the years, whereas it used to be like a, a super youth oriented, uh, activity or a bunch of teenagers. Now, if you're in your mid twenties, that's kind of young. So we got a couple of young guys. We got Vane down there in, um, Atlanta. He's young. Um, we got a couple other guys. Um, and it's worked out well. Like we've had a, a good six months of activity, a lot of new graffiti. Uh, the guys are down in Atlanta right now crushing shit. We got guys in Mexico City right now crushing shit. And it's it's been a success so far. Um, out of the dozen guys that we got in, I was expecting maybe one or two to go off the rails. And maybe it's like a bad decision. Maybe we rushed in it too soon. Uh, but so far, so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I've been seeing it. I've been seeing the, I've been seeing the action. I've been seeing really pushing the limit. You know what I mean? Really pushing the limit of spots and what is possible and very, very, very like from an outsider's perspective, very MSK. Um, taking it back to painting LA and going all city there and how it's a long distance. And, you know, I've been to LA a number of times. I love going there, but it's so different in terms of in terms of graffiti, it's different than New York. New York's a really walking, it's a walking city. And you have that, you know, the MTA in New York that is like, it makes it a walking city. You could live in, you could live in the farthest part of Queens and still be in Manhattan every day, you know, doing shit. Um, how was your life when you were in the height of going all city in Los Angeles? How was painting there with the nature of LA, with the gangs in the neighborhoods and the social conflicts and all that shit? What were what were what was the type of shit that your life was about? Um, so yeah, getting around LA is tough. Uh, I had to rely on public transit and other people's cars. Um, basic cultures in general, uh, our graffiti culture in, in LA is a little bit more gang based oriented. Um, but that doesn't mean we get along with gangs. Gangs actually kind of hate graffiti writers out there. Um, and it makes it mega dangerous. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like you're, you're dodging, you're dodging this gang stuff. And, but also we got like a quarter of the guys in the, in our crew. I want to say quarter, maybe, maybe that's a bad stat, but we have, you know, gang members in our crew too. It's just the way it is, you know, like, um, but what were you saying as far as like, it's in terms of what your life was like, you know, now you're living in, you're living in Philadelphia yeah. and your lifestyle is probably so different from what it was at that time period. Like how many nights a week would you go out painting? What was like, I go out as much as I could. I didn't really have anything else to worry about. Like now I have bills and kids and all this fucking adult shit, which is, you know, it's, it's great. And, uh, but it's like, it's extra, you know, there it's like, I get in trouble, you know, um, and I'm, I just don't, I didn't really give a shit. Like, I didn't care if I fucking died. I didn't care um, who I hurt. I didn't care um, how it affected my family. Um, now I do. Now I have uh, maybe some sort of conscience. And um, I got to look. I, I didn't really expect to live past 25. You know, like, I was like, I didn't take pictures of stuff. Um, partially because I, I was, like, worried that my house would get raided and that be used as evidence against me. And also because I thought that was it, you know, and I also knew that um, other people were documenting my stuff. Uh, I, there's a couple of guys in the crew that were really good about getting pictures. And I also knew other people that were just like photo people before there was like internet stuff. Um, so you took no pictures of your stuff? No, I don't have any. Any If you look at my Instagram, like 98% of the photos are not mine. Yeah, it's all shit that people took. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, look, I, I probably should have, you know, like... Yeah. Um, there's tons of stuff that's missing. Like my early, almost all my early stuff is like of all of, I probably did close to 40, 45, uh, freeway signs, heavens. There's maybe photos of like five or six of them, you know? Um, so I, I wish that I did take pictures of that. And back in the day also, people didn't take pictures of bombing as much as they did like, um, pieces, yeah. you know, you know, you like spend time, do a piece. It wouldn't, they wouldn't take pictures of walls or just like crush with tags or throw ups or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. 